Today we're going to be learning about multiplying and dividing decimal fractions. We're going to start off by looking at multiplying decimal fractions and we're going to do a very simple example first just to establish the rules that we're going to be using while we're doing this section. So when we're multiplying decimal fractions, let's have a look at this example. If I give you 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.07, okay? Now, we have already learned how to multiply common fractions. So if we convert these to common fractions and work it out using that, then that'll help us to learn how to do this with decimal fractions. So I'm first going to convert this to, zero, to 3 over 10 because 0 0.3 is 3 tenths, multiplied by then 0 0.07 is 7 hundredths. Okay, we've already learned how to convert between decimal fractions and common fractions. So that is what I was doing there. I was converting these decimals into common fractions. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to multiply these together. Now, I can't do any cancelling over here, and I actually wouldn't want to because I want to be able to convert it back to decimals anyway at the end. So I'm not going to cancel anything out. I'm just going to multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So 7 or 3 times 7 is 21 over 10 times 100 is 1,000. Okay, and then when we convert this back to a decimal fraction again, we end up with 0 0.021. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this over here and what it ended up as. And see if we can figure out a quicker way, instead of having to convert every single time to common fractions, then multiply and then convert back again to decimal fractions, there is a way that we can do this just working with the decimals and getting the answer straight away. If you take the, the numbers in the decimal, so you've got 0 0.3 and 0 0.07, if we take those numbers and we ignore the decimal part of it, we just look at the numbers, the non-zero numbers. So I've got over there 3 and I've got over there 7, and I multiply those together. 3 times 7 gives me 21, okay? Then... Obviously, 0 0.3 times 0 0.07 isn't 21. We found that it was 0 0.021. Now, over here, we had one decimal place. Over here, we had two decimal places. And now, suddenly, we have three decimal places. So we need to know how to work out how many decimal places we need when we are multiplying these together to get to our final answer, okay, to the product. So we can get the number part of it. By just multiplying together the numbers over there, the 3 and the 7, that gives me the 2 and the 1 for the 21, okay? But that doesn't tell me where the decimal point is going to be, how many decimal places there are going to be, and so on. So let's just have a look at what happened when we multiplied these together, okay? When I multiplied the denominators together, they were both powers of 10 because we had converted them from decimals to common fractions. The denominators were both powers of 10, it, and that's what it would always be when you convert decimals to common fractions. You'll always have powers of 10 in your denominator. You'll have 10, or 100, or 1,000, or 10,000, or 100,000, and so on. It'll always be a power of 10. And when you multiply powers of 10 together, what happens is you just end up adding the zeros together. Look over here. I had 10 times 100. 10 has one zero, 100 has two zeros, and I end up with 1,000, which has three zeros, okay? So when I multiplied those together, I was just basically taking those and adding their zeros together, and that gives me the 10,000 over here. The same concept then would apply with our decimal places. If I add the one decimal place here, so there's one there and there's one, two decimal places over here, this will tell me how many decimal places my answer should have. Okay, so over here I have one, two, three decimal places. So what I can do to work this out without doing the whole common fraction thing in the, mid, in the middle is I can go 0 0.3 times 0 0.07 and I can work out what is 3 times 7. Okay, 3 times 7 is 21. So I know that the number part of this must be 21. Okay, but now I need to know where it must be in the number, what positions, what place values the 2 and the 1 are going to have. So now I need to figure out how many decimal places there are. So I look at 0 0.3 and 0 0.07 and I count how many decimal places there are altogether. There's one, two, three decimal places in the two numbers that are being multiplied together. So I must have three decimal places in my product. So now I need to make sure that my decimal places 
are in the right place and my comma is in the right place. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to have the 21 that I worked out over there. Now the 21, if I just write it as normal 21, the comma is after the one, it's at the end of the number, okay? But I must have three decimal places, so it needs to move one, two, three places, my comma must go there, and I must fill in extra spaces with zeros, there and there. So this is going to be zero comma zero two one, making sure that I have three decimal places. So this must be at the end of those three decimal places, and anything in between this and my comma needs to be filled in with zeros. So that's how we're going to go about doing our multiplication. First, we need to multiply the number part of the two fractions together, ignoring the decimals. Then we need to work out how many decimal places I need to have in the product, and then I need to put that information together to get my answer. Okay, so now let's have a look at a proper example. In this example, we've got 0 0.615, and we're multiplying that by 0 0.0023. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we need to multiply over here the two numbers together, but ignoring the decimal part of it. We're just going to look at the numbers. We've got over there, 615, and over there, 23. So that's going to be 615 multiplied by 23. Okay, so I'm going to work this out in the way that we would with any other multiplication. 615 multiplied by 23. Okay, so now, when I multiply this together, two lines there, I'm going to start with the 3 over here. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, let me just move this up for you so you can see it better. Okay, so I've got 3 times 5 is 15. I put the 1 over here and I put the 5 over there. And then I multiply 3 times 1, which is 3, and I add this 1 over here. That makes 4. So that's going to be 4 over there. And then 3 times 6 is 18. There's nothing to put the 1 over there, so I'm going to put it over here like that. So I've got 1845. That is from multiplying the 3 by the 615. Now I need to multiply the 20 by 615. So I need to first put down a zero because I'm multiplying 20, not just two. And then two times five is 10. So I put the one over there and the zero over here. Two times one is two plus that one is three. And then two times six is 12. And that goes over there like that. Now I can go and I can add these together. That should have been one line over there. I can add these together over here. So I've got 5 plus nothing, 4 plus nothing, 8 plus 3 is 11, 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4, and then 1. So now I've got 1, 4, 1, 4, 5. So when I multiply the 615 and the 23 together, I get 14,145. Now obviously 0 0.615 multiplied by 0 0.0023 is not going to be 14,145. So now we need to work out where the decimal point is going to be. We know that we started with We've got 615 times 23 gives us this, but that's not the final answer. We have to go and work out where our comma is going to be, how many decimal places we're supposed to have. So in this over here, 0 0.615 times 0 0.0023, how many decimal places do we have all together? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 decimal places all together. That means that our answer, our product, needs to have seven decimal places as well. So at the moment, the decimal comma would be over there. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is where the decimal comma needs to go. And every space that doesn't have anything needs to be filled in with a zero. So I've got one, two, and then the zero in front of the decimal point. So that's going to be zero comma, zero, zero, one, four, one, four, five. So that's what you would get for that question. So we multiply the number part of our decimals, ignoring the decimals themselves, and we find out what that is equal to. Then we count the number of decimal places there are, and we make sure that our answer, our product, has that many decimal places. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. Here's the first one you're going to do. 
This is a nice simple one just to get you started. 0 0.0007 times 0 0.08. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work on this one. Okay, so let's go through that one quickly. So in this question, you're just multiplying 7 and 8 together. Okay, so we've got 7 times 8, and that gives us 56. Okay, you should know that 7 times 8 is 56. Now we need to look and see how many decimal places there are altogether. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places altogether. So my product needs to have six decimal places. So when I go with the 0 0.0007 times 0 0.08 equal to something with 56 in it, I need to make sure that it has six decimal places. So another way of doing this is to look at the number of digits in the product you worked out over there. So this is two, and here I need to have six decimal places. So the difference between this and this is how many zeros I'm going to have between the comma and the 56. So I'm going to have 0, comma. So I've got 2 over here. I need 4 more to get 6 decimal places. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros and then the 5, 6. And now if you check it, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places in our answer over there in our product. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Right, next one, question B. I'm going to give you 1 minute to work on this one. Okay, so let's go through that one. So over here, we've got 0 0.006 times 29. Okay, so now this one isn't as simple to multiply. We're multiplying 6 and 29 together. So I'm going to use the multiplication method that we used earlier in the, in the other example we did. When I do it, I'm going to make sure that, so I'm multiplying 6 and 29 together. I'm going to make sure when I write out my multiplication, I'm going to put the longer number at the top and the number with fewer digits at the bottom because it's going to make my multiplication easier. So I'm going to have the 29 at the top multiplied by the 6 underneath it. It does work if you do it the other way around. It just means you're going to end up doing more steps for the exact same question. Okay, so over here, I'm going to have 6 times 9. That is 54, so I put the 5 over there and the 4 over here. 6 times 2 is 12, plus the 5 is 17. So that's going to be 17 over there. Now, I don't have any other digits here to multiply by, so that means I'm done with this question, okay, or with this multiplication. So I get 174. Now we need to check how many decimal places are we supposed to get. So in 0, 0,006 times 2, 9, I have got over here, one, two, three, four decimal places altogether. So our product needs to have four decimal places. This number has three digits, which means that it's one less than four. So I need to have one zero. So I need to have equal to zero comma and then one zero and then the one seven four. So that's four decimal places altogether. So you should have got for this question 0.0174. Okay, next question. 
right? Over here, you've got negative 0 0.38 times 0 0.045. Now, just because there's a negative doesn't mean you're going to do the process any differently. It just means that you're going to end up having to make sure you take that negative into account when you get your final answer. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that question. So over here, we had negative 0 0.38 multiplied by 0 0.045. The first thing we're going to do is multiply our 38 with 45 to work this out. Okay, so we've got 38 multiplied by 45. Okay, so over here, I start off by multiplying by the 5. 5 times 8 is 40, so I've got 4 and 0. And then 5 times 3 is 15, plus 4 is 19. Then I put down a 0 because I'm multiplying by 40 now, not just 4. So 4 times 8 is 32. So I put the 3 over there and the 2 over here. 4 times 3 is 12, plus that 3 is 15. Okay, so now we're going to go and add these together. Zero plus zero is zero. Nine plus two is eleven. One plus one plus five is seven, and one plus nothing is one. So I end up with one seven one zero. Okay. Now this zero is going to end up falling away later on, but we still need to make sure we have it at the moment while we're working out where our decimal point is going to be, because this is still part of the answer for multiplying thirty-eight and forty-five. Okay. So now, going back to what our original question was negative 0 0.38 multiplied by 0 0.045. First of all, our decimal places, okay? Over here, I've got one, two, three, four, five decimal places. So our product needs to have five decimal places, okay? Then I've got a negative times a positive. Remember, we know that negative times positive is negative. So that's the only thing that that negative is going to affect is that we need to make sure that we make our product negative because we have negative times a positive. It doesn't affect the actual number part of it. It doesn't affect the way we work out the product. Okay. Then we've got 1710, 1710, when we multiply 38 and 45 together, we need to have our final answer with five decimal places. This is four digits, so we need one more digit to get five. So I'm going to have zero, comma, and then zero, one, seven, one, zero. Okay, so I've got 
1710. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five decimal places. But remember, when we write decimal fractions, we don't actually have to write this last zero over here. We can leave it out. So this is negative 0 0.0171. So if you look at the final answer, it actually only has four decimal places. But that's because the last decimal place was a zero. We can't move this all up to make sure that it still has five decimal places because then we're changing the value of it. Okay, so we need to make sure that we do take that zero into account. It is part of the decimal places we get when we work it out and then we can drop it after that. Okay, so that's what you should get for question C. Then question D, the last multiplication one we're going to be doing today, is this one over here. You've got negative 6.27 multiplied by negative 3.1. I'm going to give you two minutes for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through this question. So over here we've got negative 6.27 multiplied by negative 3.1. So first of all, we're going to be multiplying 627, 627, by 31. Okay. So first I multiply 1 by, this, by 627. So that's going to be 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 2 is 2 and 1 times 6 is 6. Then I put down a 0 because I'm multiplying by 30, not just 3. Then 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. And then 3 times 6 is 18. And now I'm, I'm going to go and add those together. So now I've got 7 plus 0 is 7. 2 plus 1 is 3. 6 plus 8 is 14, 1 plus 8 is 9, and then 1. So I end up with 19,437. Now I need to go back and answer the question that I was given. So I've got negative 6.27 times negative 3.1. First of all, let's find out how many decimal places we're supposed to have. So I've got over here 1, 2, and then over here a third one. So that's three decimal places altogether. Okay, once you know how many decimal places you have, you can go and take this and convert it into an answer for that. A negative times a negative is positive. Then I need to have three decimal places. Now this is more than three digits. So only three of these are going to be decimal places. The rest will not be decimal places. So the last three digits will be decimal places. So my comma is going to go after the nine over there. So I'm going to have 19 comma and then 437. So that's what we should get for question D.
Right, now we're going to go on to dividing decimal fractions. Okay, now what you need to know when we're dividing decimals is that we're going to be using the concept similar to what we did when we were using uh, equivalent fractions. So if you have something like 44 divided by 1 comma 1, okay, then this could be written, remember a division question can be written as a fraction. So I can write this as 44 over 1 comma 1. Now we know that we can find an equivalent fraction to this by multiplying the top and the bottom both by the same amount. Now if I don't want to have a comma, a decimal in my denominator, I'm going to just multiply by 10 until I don't have decimal in the denominator anymore. Every time I multiply by 10, the comma is going to effectively move one place to the right. So if I want this to move one place to the right, so that it's not a decimal, so it's just 11, I'm going to multiply by 10. But I must do the same thing to the top and the bottom. So that's going to be 440 over 11. This is going to give me the same result as that. Now, when we're doing division with decimal fractions, we want this number over here, which is our divisor, to not be a decimal fraction. We want it to be a whole number. So we're going to multiply by a power of 10. We might multiply by 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000, whatever we need to multiply by to get it so that this is a whole number, the divisor, the one that we're dividing by. And then whatever we do to this one, we have to do the same thing to that, just like we had to in our fraction over there. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do the same to the top. The same thing happens when you're working with it written like this. It's still a division question. Whether it's written like that or like that, it's still division. So you, so long as you do the same thing to the dividend, which is this number, and the divisor, which is that number, multiplying by the same amount or dividing by the same amount, your result for your division will remain the same. Okay, so I'm going to take... In this example over here, I would take both of those and multiply them by 10. And when I do that, this would move one place to the right, and this comma would also move one place to the right. You can't see it, but it is moving one place to the right, and so we would fill that in with a zero. So this would end up being 440 divided by 11. And once we've got 440 divided by 11, then we can work that out much more easily. 440 divided by 11 is going to be 40. Okay, we would use uh, short division or long division, whichever is the method that you want to use in the example you're busy working on. Okay, so let's go on to our first proper example for today. Over here, we have got 0 0.00032, and we're dividing that by 0 0.05. Okay, so we're starting off with this. Now remember, we want to divide by a whole number. So I want to multiply this by something that will make this a whole number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by 100. When I multiply by 100, this decimal place is going to go one, two places to the right, and I'm going to end up with five. This one over here will also move two places to the right because I have to do the same thing to both. Okay, so I'm going to end up with this over here. This is going to be my comma over there. So that means I don't need these other extra zeros. So I'm going to have 0, comma, and then 0, 3, 2, divided by, and over here, the comma moved over there. It's after the 5. I don't need those zeros. So it's just going to be divided by 5. Okay, so now I've got 0 .3, 0 0.032 divided by 5. It doesn't matter if this is a decimal. It's the divisor that we want to be a whole number. The dividend can be a decimal and that's not a problem. Okay, so now let's go and put this into our division bracket. The dividend goes inside the division bracket. And the 5, the divisor, is going to go outside. So I've got my 5 over there and I've got my 0, 0,032 over here. And now we're going to go and divide. I'm going to be using short division. So I'm going to say 5 doesn't go in there, so I put a 0 over there. I do need to write the 0 because the comma is going to be over there, and I need to have something in front of that comma, so I've got a 0. Then 5 doesn't go into this 0 either, so I'm going to put another 0. 5 also doesn't go into 3, so I put another 0, but there's a remainder of 3. So now I have 32. 5 does go into 32. It goes into 32 six times, 
with a remainder of 2. Now what do I do with that remainder of 2? I'm going to put an extra 0 over here and I'm going to put my remainder over there. I can add extra zeros because it's off to the decimal point. It doesn't matter if I add more zeros to my number, it's still going to stay the same value. So when you have a situation like this where you don't have any more digits to add your remainder onto, you just put a zero and then you can put your remainder there. So long as you've got a comma. If you don't have a comma yet, you put a comma and then you do it. Okay, now 5 goes into 20 four times. So now I end up, and there's no remainder, so now I end up with 0 0.0064. So that is what I end up with from this question. 0 0,00032 divided by 0 0,05 is equal to 0 0.0064. Okay, and that's what you should get for that question. So when we're doing division like this, we want to make sure that our divisor is a whole number and we multiply by a power of 10 to make it a whole number, to move the decimal point. We have to do the same thing to the dividend and the divisor. Once we've done that, we then just work out the division. You can use short division or long division. I use short division over here. But when you're dividing by a bigger number, then you might want to use long division. And then once we've worked that out, we can then write down our answer as the, the result of dividing those two decimal fractions. Okay, so now you're going to do some for yourself. Okay, the first one you're going to do is this one over here. And I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here, we've got 0 0.00072, and we're dividing that by 0 0.003. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change these both by multiplying by a power of 10 so that the divisor is a whole number. So to make this a whole number, I need to move that comma three places. So I need to move this comma three places as well. So it's going to be one, two, three. So it's going to be just in front of the seven. So I'm going to have zero comma seven two divided by three. Okay, so once I've got that, I can then go and work out the division. So I'm going to use short division again. So I'm going to have three going into seven or zero comma seven two. Okay, three doesn't go into zero. So I've got zero over there and then comma. Then 3 does go into 7, it goes in twice with a remainder of 1, and then 3 goes into 12 four times with no remainder. So I just get 0, 0,24. So I can say that 0, 0,00072 divided by 0, 0,003 is equal to 0, 0,24. So that's what we get for that question. Right, question B. I'm going to give you one minute again to work on this question.
Okay, so let's go through that. So in this one, we've got 2.07 divided by 0 0.6. The first thing we're going to do is change these so that the 0 0.6 is a whole number. So I'm going to multiply by 10, moving the comma one place to the right. So I need to do the same thing over here. That's going to give me 20 comma 7 divided by 6. Okay, so now I can go and do my division. So I'm going to have in my division bracket 20 comma 7 and outside here I've got 6. Now 6 doesn't go into 2. I don't need to write a 0 on top here though because the 2 is in the tens place. It's not in the units place. Okay, and then I have remainder 2. So now I've got 6 going into 20. 6 does go into 20 three times with a remainder of 2. I need to write down my comma over there as well. Then 6 goes into 27, it goes into actually 24, 4 times, and that leaves a remainder of 3. Now I need to put a 0 over here and then I can write that remainder of 3. And then 6 goes into 30, 5 times with no remainder. So that gives me 3.45. So that means that 2.07 divided by 0 0.6 is equal to 3.45. So that's what we should have got for question B. Right, question C. Okay, you've got negative 0 0.195 divided by negative 0 0.08. I'm going to give you one minute again to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that question. So over here, I have negative 0 0.195 divided by negative 0 0.08. So the negatives I don't have to worry about at the moment. What I do need to do first before I can start doing the actual division is I need to change the 0 0.08 to a whole number by multiplying by 100 so I can move the decimal place to the decimal point two places. And I have to do the same thing over here to the dividend as well. So it's going to be negative. Then if I move those two places, the comma is going to be between the 9 and the 5. So it's going to be 19,5 divided by, then over here, it's going to be negative 8. So now I've got negative 19.5 divided by negative 8. I don't have to worry about this negative, the negatives at the moment. Those will come into play when I'm doing the actual final answer. But for now, I'm just going to do the division of 19.5 by 8. So I've got over here 19,5 divided by 8. Right, so first, 8 doesn't go into 1, but it does go into 19. So 8 goes into 19 twice with a remainder of 3. Then 8 goes into, and I put my comma down over there. Okay, then 8 goes into 35 four times with a remainder also of 3. So I put my 0 over there, so I can put down my remainder of 3. Then 8 goes into 30 three times with a remainder of 6. And then 8 goes into 60 seven times with a remainder of 4. And finally, 8 goes into 40 five times. So you should have got for this one 2.4375. So now we can say, therefore, negative 0 0.195 divided by negative 0 0.08 is equal to a negative divided by negative is positive and then 0 0.195 divided by 0 0.08 gave us 2.4375. Okay, so that's what you should get for question C. And then question D. We've got 0 0.007987 divided by zero, negative 0 0.005. I'm going to give you a minute again to work on this last question for today.
Okay, so let's go through that last question. So we have 0 0.007987 divided by negative 0 0.005. The first thing we're going to do, is we're going to move our decimal point over here by multiplying by 1,000. So that's going to give us 5 over there. Then I must do the same thing over here, multiplying by 1,000. So this will be 1, 2, 3. The comma is going to be between the 7 and the 9. So I'm going to have 7, 987 divided by negative 5. Okay, so now I'm going to go and do my division. I've got 5 outside over here, and inside I've got 7, 987. Okay, so first, 5 does go into 7, it goes in once, there's a comma, and then with a remainder of 2. 5 goes into 29 5 times, with a remainder of 4. 5 goes into 48 9 times, with a remainder of 3. 5 goes into 37 7 times, put a 0 down so that I can put down my remainder of 2, and then 5 goes into 24 times. So here you should have got 1.5974. So now I can say, therefore, 0, 0.007987 divided by negative 0 0.005 is equal to, a positive divided by a negative is negative, and then I ended up with 1.5974. So that's what you should have got for that question. And that is how we do multiplication and division with decimal fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.